Hey everyone. So is Google's Gemini coming to the iPhone? Do we all have to get used to saying, hey, Gemini? That doesn't really roll off the tongue very well, does it? Well, I doubt that will be the case, but we do have news today about a potential AI partnership between Apple and Google. So let's take a dive into what we know about it so far and you know its potential implications. Plus, I've got to look at the most impressive AI avatar I have seen to date. Yeah, I mean, this flat out beats everything I have seen so far. Okay, let's dive in. Kicking off, it is no secret that Apple has been lagging on the AI front. Siri came out of the gate pretty impressive, but let's face it, it has become a bit of a joke. And in terms of their messaging, I mean, Apple just steadfastly refused to lean in. Tim Cook basically refused to say the letters A and I for the longest time, instead trying to pivot everything to machine learning. It has been speculated that Apple's commitment to user privacy has been a key factor in hindering its forward movement in AI. According to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo in mid-2023, this lag is attributed to Apple's stringent data privacy policies, which restrict the flow of data, an arguably crucial element for training and improving AI systems. Because of this, while everyone else has been implementing some kind of generative AI capability in their products since early 2023, Apple won't even be able to push this to its devices until late 2024, coinciding with its major OS releases in all of its products. And true to that analysis, 2024 has seen a pretty big uptake in, you know, Cupertino branded AI. For one, Tim Cook has seemed to have discovered the vowels A and I, and that may have something to do with the fact that investors have been slamming their fists down on the table saying, what's the deal, Tim Apple? What's the deal? Just two weeks ago, it was reported that investor impatience is growing with Apple stock slumping 12% this year, pulling its market below Microsoft's. Kim Forrest, a chief investment officer at Bouquet Capital Partners said, investors found this thing called generative AI that captured their attention last year. Well, that happened to a lot of us, Kim, not just the investors. And it's taking money away from the other tech companies because people want to be in the hottest thing. Rightly or wrongly, Apple has to show that it's still relevant in a world where investors want AI. Funny enough, the investors also shot down an AI transparency report that would disclose the ethical guidelines that Apple was using to adopt this technology. You know, shocking, right? The money people don't care about the ethical guidelines. Well, that's, I mean, who could have foreseen that? All of this has led to a real rush for Apple to have its AI moment with Tim Cook going on a bit of a media blitz talking about the upcoming AI features in iOS 18 and calling the M3 MacBook Air the best consumer laptop for AI. Now, according to a Bloomberg report, Apple is in active negotiations with Google to bring Gemini to the iPhone, which is really surprising because it has been widely known that Apple has been working on its own LLM dubbed Apple GPT. More on that in just a second. One potential theory for this partnership comes via a tweet from Robert Scoble in which he said, Apple gets to win with new Siri. Its own models are highly controlled. I hear trained on synthetic data, so we'll give accurate answers, but only on specific topics. If a question pops up that goes outside of that pre-done data set, it'll punt to Google. As an example, sorry, Apple's own models can't answer that question, so we went to Google Gemini, here is its answers. Now that is just a theory, even according to Robert in his own tweet, but I think we can take things possibly one step further because this is just a licensing deal that, you know, obviously Apple and Google aren't merging or anything of the sort. But this may have something to do with the upcoming iPhone 16 release. According to a leak reported on Mac Rumors, iOS 18 will bring many of the LLM features to all iPhones, but on-device AI features could remain exclusive to the iPhone 16. And if reports are true about a local on-device LLM, well, that echoes back to Apple's commitment to user privacy as obviously having a you know local LLM is going to mitigate a lot of the safety concerns that enterprise customers run into with ChatGPT. That, and obviously since it's running locally, it will be a lot faster. Because of the hardware requirements, this upgraded Siri would only be able to be run locally on the new iPhone 16. 
That said, there are a lot more iPhones in the world than, you know, the upcoming iPhone 16. And Apple likely realizes that most people don't run out and upgrade their phones every year. Well, except for tech bro Chad, but that guy's really annoying. So potentially enter Google, which could leverage Gemini as a bit of a stopgap for Apple, uh, biding it some time for a few more generations of iPhones to come out. And this wouldn't be unprecedented as Apple already has a longstanding deal with Google to make Google the default search engine on its devices. That deal is reported to be about $19 billion a year. There's no question that if Apple and Google team up, at least in, just in terms of sheer market share, that they will absolutely dominate when it comes to mobile AI, which whether you necessarily agree with it or not, is going to truly be AI's mainstream moment. I don't doubt that anyone this far into the video can easily navigate around any desktop or laptop. I'm kind of thinking about Uncle Bob, who probably hasn't touched his Dell potato in the last seven years and does all of his computing, you know, via the phone. Either way, if this deal does go through, this very much feels like the line in the sand in the AI wars, uh, basically, you know, Microsoft and OpenAI versus Google and Apple. Let me know what you guys think in the comment. Moving on, this is the best AI avatar I have seen yet. Uh, check this out. Uh, our civilization is built on technology. Technology is the glory of human ambition and achievement, the spearhead of progress and the realization of our potential. For hundreds of years, we properly glorified this and until recently, I am here to bring the good news we can advance to a far superior way of living and of being. We have the tools, the systems, the ideas, we have the will. It is time once again to raise the technology flag. It is time to be techno-optimists. That's pretty crazy, right? This is Argyle.ai. It's the first model that I've seen that really kind of captures eye movement and body language. It doesn't sort of have that kind of robotic sort of like loop thing going on along with like the dead-eyed stare. Hey folks, this is Zuck and I just checked the Grok open source release and I like to say I'm not really impressed. It seems like there are a lot of people who just assumed that Grok would be higher quality because it's Elon and he just released the weights. But honestly, I'm pretty surprised that Llama 2 is so much better for the vast majority of things that people use these large language model. 314 billions parameter is too much. You need to have a bunch of H100 and I already buy them all. See you soon, guys. Steering clear of the obvious Mark Zuckerberg is a robot or an alien or an alien robot when, you know, the truth is everybody knows he's a lizard person. Uh, you can see that there are some issues, mostly in the lip flap, and I still do see a little bit of unnatural rhythmic timing in the blinking. I should also add that the cadence of the speech isn't quite right, but still, I mean, that is pretty good. There are a few other examples. And one thing that I did notice is that there's a lot of jump cutting happening. I don't know if that's necessarily a limitation of the model, but you know, to be honest, because of like modern YouTube editing, I don't necessarily think that anyone would notice. Subtle editing jokes are now going into the skills section of my LinkedIn page. Argyle's in beta right now. You can sign up for the waitlist at the link down below. Uh, when and if I get access to it, we will dive in for a full test. On that note, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim and I am not an AI generated avatar.